Oh my goodness, I want this thing. <laughs> This is Scott from the Old Curiosity Shop, and I'm back again with another good old-fashioned kitchen counter thrift haul. And today the Old Curiosity Shop is stuck. Yeah, we're stuck somewhere between 1955 and 1965. Wow, look at all this really cool mid-century modern. Not all that modern, but definitely mid-century. So let's take a look at what's what. Now, a few of these things you have seen before, and I've been holding on to them to do a big uh, mid-century thrift haul, although this isn't really that big of a thrift haul. But I did want to group everything together um, because it's all from about the same era. So there are some drinking glasses over here, uh, some tumblers about five inches tall. There's six of them and they match. There are two that are uh, this faded yellow color. Uh, there are two that are green and two that are pink. So I really like the stylized flowers and it's just very uh, typical of a sort of late 50s, early 60s pattern. There's no mark on the bottom so they could be Libby but I'm feeling a Hazel Atlas feel. Uh, the thing with Hazel Atlas, and we'll talk about that in a minute, is that um, well, we'll talk about it in a minute. <laughs> These are all in really good condition. There's no dishwasher damage and uh, the glass is smooth and shiny, nice luster. Uh, the graphics are in perfect condition uh, or near perfect on all six of these tumblers. A wonderful stack of mid-century dishware here designed by the great Russell Wright. And we'll just take one of the saucers off here and let you take a look at it move over here into the light well I guess I could do it from right here okay so there we see they're signed by the designer uh, Russell Wright 
who I'm sure anyone, well, I know anyone in the mid-century knows who that is. Um, and then it's called uh, Residential by Northern. And then we see, then we see the word, the name uh, Boston. Now, it's just sort of odd, a bunch of odd pieces here. They're sadly no, no, nothing to drink out of and no creams or sugars, but a whole stack of saucers in wonderful mid-century colors. Um, some luncheon plates, some serving bowls, large serving bowls, lots of dinner plates, and then a big platter down below. And uh, I just love the colors. Now you can see these were used and there's plenty of utensil marks and there we'll see there. And the surface is a little dull. Now I know people talk about rubbing olive oil on it and wax. <sighs> there's all kinds of things you can do to kind of cover that up. In my experience, I don't really like to do that when I'm selling something because it, it, I don't particularly think it's all that honest because the way, what I have found is that no matter what you put on these, um, any type, remember you're going to eat off of this. Okay. So it's not like a piece of furniture where we can varnish over it. I can polish this up and make it look good for a photograph, but uh, I, I'm not really interested in putting wax or lemon oil on an eating surface. So listen, I'm honest, I leave it as is. If someone wants to display it and not eat off of it, then they can wax the heck out of it. Put lemon oil on it, olive oil, other types of waxes and things to sort of bring this back up again, sort of the way you polish Bakelite radios. But just to make things look good in photography, uh, I don't do that. So it's, it is as it is that these were used and uh, what you see is what you get. And uh, this, by the way, you'll often uh, see it listed as, as uh, Melmac or Melamine, uh, but it's a, it's a type of a synthetic plasticky stuff. It sells well. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how well these are going to do because of the wear that's, that you see on the dishes, but I paid very little for it, and uh, I'm sure collectors would love to have it even if they're not going to use it, but simply to polish it up and put it on display it has a great mid-century design. This little set right here you saw, this Federal set, the caddy with the eight uh, little roly-polies here, uh, the Harlequin design on them is outstanding there's nowhere on the almost nowhere on these at all which is very unusual to find these in such great condition can you see how almost perfect that is so and then they fit down here on these little spiders underneath if you will that that hold them in place I'm also throwing in also by Federal a matching a matching bowl in the same pattern called Harlequin. These had lids when they were originally made. There's no lid on this one, and I think it came in a set of three. But then this is great for popcorn peanuts. Mm-hmm. See, there's Federal. Okay. See that? Heat proof. So really these were casseroles that you could cook in. But uh I can just see the mid-century coffee table, somebody, you know, serving drinks or whatever they, they serve out of these things, and then having um, party mix, popcorn, Chex mix in that. Isn't that fantastic? Now, I said I would mention something else about Hazel Atlas. I don't know that these are Hazel Atlas, but they have that feel. And you say, well, then wouldn't they be marked Hazel Atlas or Continental Can Company? Not necessarily because it wasn't always marked. Hazel Atlas, you know the H and the A, or the A and the H on the bottom. I don't have any Hazel Atlas here marked Hazel Atlas. Uh, was, per was bought or acquired by the Continental Can Company, I think in 1956. And for a while, they still, they didn't put anything on the bottom. The HA would sometimes appear or it would be called Hazelware. 
And then the three C's for Continental Can Company started showing up. And we can see the three C's on this example right here. You see that? It's, bare, it's hard to tell that there are three letter C's all nesting inside of each other for Continental Can Company. And so these are the reason why they look so much like Hazel Atlas products is, is that they still, I imagine some of the designers were, might have still been there and some of the old molds and so forth. So it still has a very Hazel Atlas feel. So here are two cocktail shakers with no lids. This one marked Continental Can, this one marked Nothing, and this one obviously over here made by the same company. So we really have three that are identical. I'm sorry. Three made by the same company, but all different graphics. This one retains its lid. We talked before about this possibly missing a decanter, um, and it may be, but it also may be that it's just missing um, a cocktail shaker. So if a person could not find a decanter to put in here, you could place an amber colored or really any color cocktail shaker that you want uh, in the center. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's stick with these for a minute. This one is my favorite, I think. I like the colors and the graphic design. Then, of course, all the typical drinks that we see, that you usually see. So I like that one, I think, the best. My second favorite is these very 60s hot air, hot air balloons. Can you see? Or even really late 50s. This, this could be 50s as well. For some reason, I want to start singing Around the World in 80 Days, but I'll spare you. Although I'm actually not a bad singer. And then, uh, thirdly, Another cocktail shaker, we see the Moulin Rouge, the Ballet de Paris, and the Opera of Paris with lots of uh, drink mixes, recipes for mixing drinks. Drinks. So barware, right? Cocktailiana. I think I just made that up. Cocktailiana. <clears throat> All right. Put all this stuff back. And I'm going to turn this bad boy on just again for a minute to uh, give us the beautiful light. I should have had that on before. So this we saw, I love the legs. <laughs> it looks like it's going to just get up and put some 45s on the record player all by itself and dance around the living room, doesn't it? With all the little amber glasses. So I love this. Unsure of the maker. And then a mid-century modern lamp. Yes, I've got the wrong light bulbs in here. Ugh. And I, I hate to see these light bulbs in it. I broke the ones that were in it, but they can be replaced. These are the chandelier size, but they, um, I think the, the uh, white light bulbs in the circular shape, like snowballs, would be the best in there. And this is unmarked, but it's a mid-century designer. And uh, a walnut base with a brass and, uh, I guess, aluminum uh, metal. So we turn it once, we get one. Twice, we get the second. And now we have full force. And this is in would look better with the right light bulbs in it, but it's in really good condition. Um, as you'll notice, There's I cleaned it up quite a bit, so... Uh, there's no, you don't really see any rust or any pitting or anything like that. Uh, the wood is left natural, that's the original switch and the old felt bottom. And this is ready to go for that mid-century living room. And what uh, looks like it would be marvelous on top of a television set. And so you can see what it says here, it's currently um, a very warm 
ooh, about 68 degrees in this house. Uh, this was actually sitting in the uh, sun. It's really not that warm in here. So there's the temperature, the barometer, and the relative humidity. And this is all working very well. I've had this for a while, and it's in um, that appears to be a Bakelite case. It might be plastic uh, uh, or a plastic other than Bakelite. And then uh, I like how the bottom is painted as well. And yes, I know how to tell the difference between Bakelite. You know, um, there's people test it with chemicals and things. All you really have to do is rub it really, really quickly with your thumb, heat it up, and then smell it. And once you really smell Bakelite, you'll never confuse it with, with something else. But this actually, I think, is plast is a plastic and not, a, and not Bakelite. So it looks really good. As you can see, it's in pr really good condition. And it's in working shape. The last thing I have to show you is this wonderful painting. Bear with me for a moment, folks. Okay. Let's get a little bit of light on it here. Oh, that's not okay. So we'll back up. And you can see it measures, oh, I want to say maybe 24 inches square. I haven't, I haven't measured it. And um, it's dated 1964. I can't really make out the name of, the, of uh, whoever it is who painted it. It looks like jo Joanna. You, you guys guess. Here. What does that say? Jonah, Jonas Fellow? I don't know. But anyway, 1964. I think it's pretty clear that it says 1964. And uh, it's in its original frame. Uh, and it's oil paint on canvas. There are some places of loss, quite a few places of loss, where the paint has come off of the canvas. The nice thing is, because it's sort of an impressionistic painting, you really, when you stand back, you don't really see the losses unless you really look at it closely. Now, if I zoom in, you'll see loss here. Uh, let's see, here on the bus, um, a little bit here. So there are places where definitely where we have problems with paint coming off of the canvas here as well. But as far as I can tell, this is just an amateur um, artist, but I think an amateur artist who's got some skill. I really, it's just there's so much energy in this picture, it just pops. And you can just, you can hear this city street. And me living in the city, um, I love this thing, although I am going to sell it. We can see over here there's um, some folks, you know, out on the street. We see the buses and the cars. And uh, these could be these could be trolleys here. We have trolleys that look like that in Philadelphia, and uh, they do run on the street, street cars. And then we see the uh, scene here, and the only thing you can make out um, that's printed uh, would be the Woolworth right here. I that's that's just I mean that that just makes it over the top for me is that it says Woolworths. Okay, so I'll let you see the frame. And if we turn it this way, there's a little bit of warping in the canvas. This needs to be tightened up on, on, on the stretcher. I mean, if somebody, I would just hang it on the wall as is, unless somebody decides they really want to do, spend some money and have some conservation done to it. And I'll let you see. Uh, well, let's see. I'm not focusing. Oh, for Pete's sake, come on. Well, hold on everybody. I want you to see where they bought the canvas anyway. Uh, there we go. Does that say Glendale, New York? I believe it does. And that's about all we see on the back. I can't really... Um, say any more about it than that other than I like it I think for an amateur artist it's well done 
And uh, even though there's some some uh, chipping to the to the paint that we see, I think it's still um, because mid-century is so hot um, and and it's well done and there's a lot of energy to the picture. I think it should do well. Okay, so. It's all currently listed in the old curiosity shop up for auction and the link is in the description box below. So thanks for watching everyone. Which cocktail shaker was your favorite? And uh, what do you think about the painting that I've just sort of tossed on the floor there? Do you like it? I sure do. Okay, I'm Scott from the old curiosity shop saying thanks for watching and so long for now.